So the thing about modern laptops is that they kind of suck. They're thin, fragile, they aren't upgradable at all, they have glossy screens, no I.O., and they're pretty expensive at that. And you have to have been living under a rock for the past four or five years to not notice the resurgence of old ThinkPads. More and more people have been buying those Lenovo laptops that are like five or six years old. And because a lot of enterprises are phasing them out, they're abundant, they're very cheap, they're easy to get, they're very robust, upgradable, and they have a huge community with people that can always help you if you have any problems, etc. And here, of course, you got a lot of choice. You got very old IBM ThinkPads, you got Lenovo ThinkPads, you got T-Series, X-Series. So what is the best ThinkPad that money can buy in 2019? Well, recently I bought this laptop, ThinkPad T440P, and I would argue that this is one of the best ThinkPads money can buy in 2019. And I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> But first, I'd like to make a small announcement. Now, as you all probably know, I have Patreon now. And as soon as we have enough patrons, I'm going to make a little project. I'm going to buy an X200, uh, install Libreboot on it, and give away to one of my patrons. So if you'd like to see this project come to life, if you'd like to take part in it, do check out my Patreon. So first, let's talk about the bad things, just to get them out of the way. This laptop has a terrible trackpad. For some reason, after the 30 series, Lenovo decided that they need to rework the trackpad to make it more modern, make it more MacBook-like or something. And the result is, well, let, let's just say the first thing you're gonna wanna do if you buy this laptop is to buy a replacement trackpad. And the good news is in the next generation laptops, Lenovo decided to bring back the old trackpad, which is coincidentally compatible with this model. So a replacement trackpad will cost you about 15 to 30 euros depending on your luck and it's a little bit difficult to replace it You have to take the palm rest off which is held by thousands of snaps But once you're done with it, you can have Authentic Lenovo ThinkPad experience and honestly, I would say it's totally worth it There are two models Synaptics and Alps and I heard a lot of people saying that Alps is like the worst and you should never buy it. But I bought the Alps model and it works just fine, at least in Linux. I've heard that there might be some problems with drivers on Windows, but I can't say anything about that. T440P is extra thick. Damn boy, he's thick! So depending on whether you like it or not, you might think it's a disadvantage. And a lot of people told me that this model is pretty thick, but I was like, nah, you know, it's, it's okay. You know, how thick can it be? But I was really surprised when I got it. I don't know if you can actually see, but it's just, it's very thick. It is also pretty heavy. I think it's about 2.6 kilograms with the nine cell battery. So if you don't like uh, thick and heavy laptops, if you want something thinner, this is not a laptop for you. Another disadvantage is the keyboard. It's still pretty good compared to modern laptops, but if you compare it to ThinkPads of previous generation, it's not as good. But then again, there are some people like me who like the new design of keyboards a little bit better and it's, it all comes down to personal taste, in my opinion. This laptop also doesn't have the express card slot, so that means you can't put an external GPU in, like you could, for example, on T430 or T420. It also doesn't have the Thunderbolt port, which they kind of started putting in later, so you're kind of stuck with the uh, Intel Graphics Graphics or G4730M, which is not that much better than Intel Graphics. Yeah, that kind of sucks. There's also no Think Light and no hard drive, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi indicators, but then again, the keyboard is backlit and the activity indicators are not that important in my opinion. This model also has a dreaded Wi-Fi whitelist, so you can only put, I think, Intel Wi-Fi adapters. But this can be solved with a BIOS flash. However, unfortunately, in this model, it requires external flashing. That means SPI chip and Raspberry Pi. And if you, like me, <laughs> don't trust yourself with... Um, external flashing and if you don't have any experience that might be a little bit difficult for you. 30 series were also the last Lenovo laptops that were compatible with Core Boot. This model does not support Core Boot but you can still run ME Cleaner and kind of neuter the into management engine. It's not as good as running a free as in freedom BIOS but for me it's good enough. 40 series also features the new charging connector. I have no idea why they thought they should change it. I think the old one was pretty good, there was nothing wrong with it. But if you have a lot of Lenovo chargers at home just kind of casually lying around, they all will be useless with 40 series laptops. 
And one last thing that I would like to mention is the new design of the docking station. The thing is, it covers the ventilation holes of the laptop. So the CPU gets noticeably hotter when the laptop is docked. This is one place where Lenovo kind of messed up. I don't see why they needed to put this control block on the left. I think they could have put it on the right and that wouldn't cover the ventilation holes. It's not that bad, like your laptop is not gonna turn off because of overheating and you're not gonna get much throttling unless you're running one of those uh, beefy 55 watt TDP i7 processors, but still the laptop gets kind of hot when it's docked, so bear that in mind. Some people also report issues with external displays, like flickering, the display suddenly turning off, but as far as I've heard, this issue can be solved by flashing a docking station firmware. Yes, those things have firmware, which is really weird, <laughs> but the catch is this firmware can only flash from Windows. Luckily, my docking station doesn't have this problem. I work on external display all the time and it works fine, so yeah. Now let's talk about the advantages, and this laptop has a lot of advantages. T440p supports IPS Full HD screens out of the box, you don't need to solder any kind of PCBs, you don't need to buy an adapter, you just buy a new display and it's plug and play, like it's really easy to replace it. This was one of the reasons I actually switched from X230, because in X220 and X230, the only way to get a full HD display is to solder a PCB from NitroCaster and, you know, me and soldering... <laughs> On T420 and T430, putting in an, a full HD display is kind of easier. You just need to buy an adapter and connect it. You don't need to solder it. But those adapters really differ in quality. Some are okay and some are not. They cause various issues like flickering. And in this regard, it's kind of a lottery. You don't know what kind of adapter you get. And the only dude who supplied the adapters that were guaranteed to work kind of doesn't do it anymore, so... Yeah, this is a bummer. <laughs> the IPS panels for T440p are not glossy, they're mattes, and this is really good. You can actually go out in the sun and your laptop will remain usable. And also, when you watch Chinese cartoons and it starts buffering, you're not gonna see your stupid face reflected in the screen, so that's definitely an advantage. <laughs> T440p also doesn't have the PWM, like previous models. PWM is a technology that controls the backlight, and also it makes your eyes melt. <laughs> Basically the displays on laptops that have PWM flicker a lot and this might not be visible to the naked eye, but as soon as you try to film your laptop on camera, you can definitely see heavy flickering. Some people report a case of migraine when they use a laptop for a long time, so it's always better to not have PWM on your laptop. It's terrible, it's an abomination from hell, so it's good that T440p does not have it. <laughs> 40 series dock stations also have HDMI port, at least some of them, and basically I think it's the Pro model that does have the HDMI port and it's not that much more expensive than the other models. T440p is also a little bit easier to service. It's easier to access some components like CPU and BIOS chip. This model also has an M.2 slot for SSDs. Unfortunately, only SATA SSDs, no NVMe but this is still an upgrade from MSATA slot, which is kind of old. T440p also has a lot of advantages compared to newer models. For instance, this is the last ThinkPad that spots an upgradable CPU. It supports Haswell i7 CPUs, four cores, eight threads, so some of them are really beefy. And there's this famous guide on octoperf.com that basically outlines the upgrade process for T440p, and it recommends buying uh, i7-4702, MQ or i7-4712 MQ. The guy says that basically those are the two i7 models uh, for this platform that have uh, really low TDP, like 37 watts. But the thing about those models is that they're pretty overpriced. They go for about $150 on eBay, and this is not really a good price for those CPUs. So only buy them if you find a good deal. And otherwise, I think uh, 4700 MQ is still a good choice. Now I did find a good deal for 4702 MQ and I upgraded it yesterday. I didn't film my video because there's a lot of cool guys on YouTube. For example, this one by Sebi. And also Lenovo maintenance manual is pretty good. So if you have any problems and if you want to know how to upgrade different parts, just refer to this manual. In theory, it's also possible to put in an i7 4980HQ. There is basically this weird seller on Taobao which uh, solders those off of MacBook Pros and puts them on the adapter board or something. Some people on Reddit bought it. I think about four people bought it, but only one reported success. But if you somehow succeed to put it on, 
This processor is a beast. It also has Iris graphics, which just blows GeForce 730M out of the water. But the whole business is kind of really shady. One more thing about this laptop is it's a perfect Hackintosh laptop. I think the latest version of macOS Mojave works perfectly fine on this laptop. But the catch here is that the uh, default Wi-Fi on T440P is not compatible with macOS. And in order to upgrade to a card that is actually compatible, you need to flash the BIOS and you need to do it with an external SPI programmer which once again might be too scary for some users. There are basically two Wi-Fi cards that are compatible with macOS. One of them is pretty expensive, I think it goes for about 60 euros and I really don't understand why. And the other one is cheaper but it's kind of a hit and miss. Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it causes kernel panic. So yeah. So is the ThinkPad T440P worth it? Well, let's see. Base model goes for about 150 euros or US dollars on eBay. And even after all the upgrades, my model set me back for about 400 euros. Now let's compare it to the price of MacBook Pro with similar specs. It will be about four to six times cheaper. Of course, MacBook Pro does offer some advantages. It's thinner, it's lighter, it supports macOS out of the box if that's your kind of thing. And you also don't have to tinker with it to upgrade it manually. It's, you just buy it and you use it. But then again, it also has a glossy screen and no upgradability at all. Even the storage is sold on the motherboard and it has this god awful, terrible keyboard. So yeah, I would say that T440P is one of the best laptops they can buy in 2019 if you're willing to spend some time on it. But me, for example, I love tinkering with the hardware. I love upgrading stuff, taking it apart, doing all kinds of cool stuff with it. So if you're a tinkerer, if you like to mess around with hardware, I think it's one of the best choices in 2019. Anyway, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.